The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I've heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So even after the cutting and the pruning we talked about last week, Jesus still comes back and talks about love. The cutting and pruning was really about letting Jesus clean up our lives in order that we can be more intimate, to have a stronger connection with Jesus. In today's lesson, Jesus uses the example of the love that he has with God. From the inclusive Bible, we hear, As my Abba, Father, has loved me, so have I loved you. Live on in my love. Well, what kind of love is this? It is, of course, the agape, sacrificial love that Jesus demonstrated his entire life on earth. God loves Jesus sacrificially. Jesus loves us sacrificially. And now Jesus says, continue on loving each other in this sacrificial love. So Jesus says, continue to do what I have commanded you to, to, to do, just as I have kept God's command to love one another as I have loved you. But you know what, in reality, I don't know if I can love all the same people that Jesus loves. Can you relate to this? People, and that includes you and me, we can put others down when we become uncomfortable. And that's when we are living out all the possible isms that we can think of. In reality, though, not one of us is the same. And at faith, we believe that God created all people equal, and everyone is worthy of God's love. We've been talking a little bit more in some of our groups about our welcoming statement. So our welcoming statement says, we at Faith Lutheran Church welcome you as a child of God. As Paul said in his letter to the Galatians, for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. We strive to be a place where everyone is welcomed and affirmed. No matter your age, gender identity, sexual orientation, race, ethnicity, ethnicity, marital status, faith background, political leanings, or mental or physical disability, you are welcome as you are. As children of God, we are all one in Christ Jesus, 
and rely on the unconditional nature of God's love and grace to be our help and guide. But what if someone doesn't think and feel this way, the same way that we do? This is where I have to step back and realize that everyone is on a different journey. As much as I may have a problem with loving them, Jesus still does. This is where the cutting and pruning comes into play. As a human being and as a gay man, I know that there are people who believe that I'm going to hell and don't believe that I should have the same rights as heterosexual people. Jesus still commands me to love those people. But why should I have to love them? Couldn't I just let Jesus take care of that? Unfortunately, that is not what Jesus is commanding me to do. As he is not here physically, he is asking me to continue in his love. But is Jesus really asking me to open myself up to hate, ridicule, and discrimination? No, I don't believe so. I do believe that he is commanding me to find a way to love the person. For me, that is about showing respect. And it is a slippery slope to love in this way. But there may be a way of showing respect and setting boundary lines for ourselves. One of the first things that shows respect is to listen. We do need to understand where a person is coming from before we can respond. It may be important to repeat back what the person has told us, not only to make sure that we understand, but to make sure the other person hears the words that they have just said to us. Use I statements when responding. The point is not to criticize or to put them down, but to share where we are at and above all what our experience is. Now these may be already ways that you are trying to connect with people, but I remind you of this because often we do encounter those people that are opposite. But our command is then to show a different way of connecting with people, to love them and show respect by at least listening to them and trying to understand where they are coming from. Now, this is not easy, and one experience with them may exhaust us. I do not believe Jesus wants us to get hurt. And it is important to remember that we may not receive love back from that person, but that Jesus loves us no matter what the other person may say or do. Now, if we receive love and respect back, maybe there can be a connection there. It is important to remember that Jesus loves us and we are commanded to love regardless. We are not promised love in return from others, but it is when we abide, reside, dwell in Jesus' sacrificial love, that's when we can begin to love and show respect for all people. And Jesus says, when we abide, when we are connected to him in his love, we can experience joy. But we may think having a difficult conversation may not always end in joyfulness. But let's think about this. The Greek word for joy is charis, which is also the same root Greek word for grace, God's grace can never be taken away from us. It is always there. 
God's grace is something to always receive. It is God's grace that calls us to connect with all people. We, you and I, have been chosen to love one another, to connect with others. And that means people outside this community. And it may be out of love and respect for another, especially those that may not see things the same way, that allows us to share our story as long as we listen to them. Now, we have been studying the New Testament and Confirmation. And you know, the Jesus community that the early church was trying to grow was running into some of the issues that we still have today. For one, the hierarchical system in the Roman government put white, rich males at the top, other white men underneath, and women and children at the bottom. Jesus' community says all are equal and important and all had gifts to support the community. We continue to see this Roman hierarchical system today in leaders who promote it. Paul was also trying to teach that all people were welcome, Jews and Gentiles alike, just as our welcoming statement talks about. You see, there were no prerequisites for belonging to the community of Jesus other than responding to God's love and forgiveness. Now, in New Testament times, empires were built by conquering enemies and enslaving them. They then imposed high taxes on people to control them. And their allegiance at that time was above all to one man, and at that time, Caesar. Do we still not see this kind of system in our world today? There are countries that are doing this right now. And this structure looks tempting to many other leaders. Jesus' community is commanded to be built by loving and sharing the good news that has been experienced through Jesus' death and resurrection. Now, I'm not suggesting that we go out and tell other people of other religions that this is the only way to God. It doesn't mean, though, that we can't share our story as a Christian and then be willing to hear and accept their story and how they relate to God. This is all loving one another as Jesus has loved us. We may actually have the opportunity to learn something from people of other religions that may strengthen our own relationship with God in Jesus Christ. Now this past week I ran a across a quote in my sermon folder by P Peter Ida. God abides and makes in us a life of love that's dangerous. God abides and makes in us a life of love that's dangerous. Peter passed away on April 26 and was 56 years old. Peter was a Christian worship artist, a singer and songwriter for 25 plus years, recording 18 full albums and touring international. Peter spent a good part of his life working in youth ministry. He had performed at many Lutheran churches and camps. God abides and makes in us a life of love that's dangerous. To live out Jesus' command to love one another as he has loved us can be dangerous. It's very cultural counter. Counter-cultural. Jesus' sacrificial love goes against the way many things are structured in this world. 
Thankfully, we are not called to do this alone. We have Jesus residing in us. We have the Holy Spirit guiding and encouraging us, as well as each other here in this community. Let us turn to our lesson that we've been saying at the beginning of your bulletin, which will then continue to remind us and challenge us of this commandment. As we read together, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Amen. Amen.